Hi guys, in this lecture we're going to talk about AWS Single Sign-On SSO. AWS SSO is a relatively new service and I believe it's going to start appearing on the exam more this year. So I'm in late January now, I think in the next couple of months it's going to start appearing a bit more regularly so you might win a few more points by understanding AWS SSO. So before we get started talking about the actual service itself, let's just explore what SSO is all about. So the point of single sign-on is that you might want to have a single user identity, so an account somewhere, and through that single user account, you want that user to be able to log on to multiple services. So that might be multiple AWS accounts, it might be you know, that they need to log on to GitHub and G Suite and Salesforce and so on. And you want that to happen seamlessly. You don't want them to have multiple accounts in different places and you don't want them to have to enter passwords repeatedly. So that's what the point of SSO is. And that's what single sign-on service through AWS actually does. Now the identity sources can be in AWS SSO itself. So the user accounts can be created here or you can create your user accounts in a source like Active Directory or Azure AD. So these are both Microsoft Active Directories, one's obviously managed on Azure, one's actually managed within your data center on premises most likely. And in both cases, you're self-managing in terms of creating your own users, your own groups and your own policies. Now, I think most of the time people are gonna be using Active Directory. A lot of organizations use Active Directory and those organizations might want to just have their users created in one place. They don't want to have those users having accounts all over the place. It becomes more complex. Governance becomes more difficult, which means security can be a bit more of an issue as well. So they prefer the user accounts to be all in one place. And they want to enable it so that those users can then sign into the single sign-on service once and access different AWS accounts and access other business applications as well. Now there is quite a big list of built-in SSO integrations. This is just a few of them on the page here. There's many more, I'll show you in the console. But basically this is what it's all about. So this is what single sign-on service does and it integrates with Active Directory and it integrates with services using SAML 2.0. That's what you would use for Azure AD. So let's just look at a bit more background SSO makes it easy to centrally manage access to multiple AWS accounts and business applications so that users have a single sign-on access to all the assigned accounts and applications from one place. You can easily manage SSO access and user permissions to all of your accounts in organizations centrally. And SSO configures and maintains all the necessary permissions for your accounts automatically so it doesn't require any additional setup within the individual AWS accounts. You can assign user permissions based on job functions and customize these to meet your specific security requirements. So, so it's very flexible, it's up to you to define how your users are able to log on to different services. Now there's also those built-in integrations and that includes things like Salesforce, Box and Office 365. So you can also create and manage those identities within SSO or connect to Active Directory or Azure AD, as we covered before. It's also integrated tightly with AWS organizations, which means you can select one or more accounts within an AWS organization and grant users access to those accounts. So it doesn't have to be all accounts, you can select which ones within the organization. And it's giving you that central place to manage SSO access for AWS accounts. Now, as we said before, it creates its own directory. So it has its own directory within SSO where you can create users and you can also apply groups within SSO as well. Or well, alternatively, and most likely, you're gonna use something like Microsoft Active Directory Domain Services. And for Azure AD, it's using security assertion and markup language. So SAML 2.0, that's what you use to connect to Azure AD. What I'd like to do now is take you to the AWS Management Console. Now, we're not going to build out a configuration. Clearly, you need third-party business applications. You also need multiple AWS accounts or organizations. And that's quite complex, difficult for you, difficult for me as well. But what I do want to do is just show you around the console so you understand it a bit better. I'm in the AWS Management Console. If we go to Services, come down to Security, Identity, and Compliance, and we can find AWS Single Sign-On. Now, if you haven't used it before, you'll see the splash screen. 
and you can enable AWS SSO. Once it's enabled, you will see this screen and you can go in and choose your identity source. And by default, it's going to be AWS SSO. So the user accounts are going to be created within AWS SSO. You could choose change and then you can change to Active Directory or an external identity provider using SAML 2.0. You can, you'll see that there's also a user portal URL which you can customize. Let's go back to dashboard and choose manage SSO access to your AWS accounts. And within here you can choose an account and then choose assign users and actually assign those users to the account. Heading back to the dashboard, you can also manage SSO access to your cloud applications. So again, this is using SAML 2.0 Let's choose add new application and it's going to populate a list of third party integrations which already exist within AWS SSO. And you'll find there's quite a lot. We can just click, keep clicking show more applications and there's a lot here and there's a lot that you'll recognize I'm sure. And you could choose any one of these. Let's choose Confluence for example and click add application. And then you'll see that you get some metadata information here for SAML. And you can actually download this metadata file. And then you need to configure some information about your application. So you need an application SAML metadata file. Now clearly we don't have a application that we can integrate right now. So I'm just going to choose cancel. And if you go back to applications now, you'll see you've got this confluence. You can easily just remove that. And so there's lots and lots more applications. They're built-in integrations. So you just need to be able to fill out those files, have the right information available, and then you can connect those applications to AWS SSO quite easily. So that's it for just a quick overview in the console. And again, I think what we've covered is enough for the exam. There should be a few questions popping up. It will just be about understanding what AWS SSO is and what the likely scenarios are. So the key scenario for the exam is going to be that a company has their own identity source. So it's probably going to be Active Directory and they want to be able to configure some kind of single sign on to multiple AWS accounts. How do you do that? And the answer is going to be AWS SSO. Now to remove our configuration, you can go to settings, come down here and just choose delete AWS SSO select all of these and then choose delete and that will just put it back to where it was. So that's it for this lab guys. I hope you enjoyed it.